Renowned as the most beautiful road in Canada, and maybe even the world, the Icefields Parkway is a scenic 235-kilometer highway that connects Banff and Jasper National Parks. It takes about three hours to traverse this picturesque stretch of road, but you're going to want to allocate a lot more time than that. Prepare to be awestruck. You'll have front row seats to some of the Canadian Rockies' most incredible views, including towering snow-capped peaks, sparkling turquoise lakes, ancient glaciers, and breathtaking viewpoints. If you're planning a trip along the Icefields Parkway or just want to experience the impressive views, here are the highlights and the top stops to make along the way, including one of the most incredible hotels we've ever stayed at. First, you'll likely be leaving from Banff, so to get to Lake Louise, where the official parkway starts, I recommend traveling along Highway 1A, the Bow Valley Parkway. It runs parallel to Highway 1, and it's quiet and comes with a higher chance of spotting wildlife. At the end, you'll find Morant's Curve, one of the most iconic photography spots in the Rockies, straight out of a Bob Ross painting. Then we have the famous Emerald Waters of Lake Louise. You can take a leisurely stroll along the shore or go hiking to get a better vantage point of this stunning turquoise lake framed by soaring mountain peaks. From Lake Louise, you could visit Moraine Lake only 20 minutes away, arguably the most beautiful lake in all of Canada. This does take a little extra planning though to get here, as no private vehicles are allowed entry, so grab a spot on a shuttle to get there. I like the Marine Lake Bus Company. After you continue back on the parkway, Herbert Lake is located right off the side of the highway. This is a serene little lake with great views. There's restrooms, picnic areas, and you can even go for a glacial dip here. Next, we have Bow Lake, a shimmering turquoise gem nestled at the foot of Bow Glacier. This is a beautiful stop with its reflective waters mirroring the surrounding peaks. There's lots of room for vehicles to pull off from the highway, and it's a great spot for photos, stretching your legs, or even go for another dip. This is Bow Lake. Flam, flam. Isn't it gorge? Gorge. And if Lake Louise and Moraine Lake are just too busy, this is the next best alternative and the easiest to get to. Okay, so we stopped for a quick little stretch break at Pedo Lake. This is one of the most famous lakes along the Icefield Parkway. Definitely worth a stop. It's only about a five minute hike to get up here and the views are amazing. A short hike from the parking area will lead you to a stunning overlook offering a bird's eye view of this vivid blue lake, cradled by the dramatic mountain range that surrounds it. There's lots of parking and the trail is paved the whole way, albeit a little steep, especially if you're not used to the altitude. Pedo Lake is one of the most accessible, breathtaking viewpoints in all of the Canadian Rockies. Well worth the stop. By the way, I highly recommend downloading Guide Along. It's an audio tour guide app that shares stories, tips, points of interest, and recommended places to visit, and it's all automatically triggered by GPS, so you can go at your own pace and you don't need Wi-Fi. There's a specific tour for the Icefields Parkway, which will tell you even more about all these stops and viewpoints as you pass by. It's only $12 and you have it forever. And you can also bundle it with more areas like Banff and Vancouver. Mistea Canyon is another hidden gem that showcases the raw power of nature. Here, you can experience the rushing waters as they carve their way through the narrow gorge, forming sculpted rock formations and swirling pools. Take a short hike along the canyon's rim to fully appreciate its grandeur. Next, you'll come to Saskatchewan Crossing, which is almost the halfway point. It's a good spot for a rest break. There's a gas station, restaurant, a bar, washrooms, and even a hotel called the Crossing Resort. Next, we come to the Weeping Wall Viewpoint. This is a brief stop right off the highway. Here you can view a series of small waterfalls that look like tears flowing down the side of the mountain. As you continue, you'll reach the Big Bend viewpoint, which is a sweeping curve in the highway that offers expansive views of the valley below. And it gives you a really good sense of how vast these mountains really are. And the bend itself is a tight hairpin turn that's pretty fun to drive. If you're looking for a good hike along the Icefields Parkway, I recommend Parker Ridge. It's a moderate five kilometers with about 250 meters of elevation gain and panoramic views at the top. Finally, we arrive at the Columbia Icefield, a network of glaciers that have been around since the last ice age. The star of the show is the Athabasca Glacier. And when you get here, it's like a postcard has come to life. We parked it here for the night and checked into the Glacier View Lodge, which sits on top of the Columbia Icefield Discovery Center. This unique and remote lodge has unrivaled views of the glacier. 
In fact, it's the only hotel in Canada overlooking a massive glacier. This place was an experience like no other. As soon as you step out of the elevator, you enter the Moraine Lounge and the hotel lobby area. We were greeted with epic glacier views through this floor-to-ceiling window that spans the room. After checking in, we got to our room, one of only 30 here. And as you can see, it's got this contemporary chic kind of Scandinavian alpine style with, of course, a view of the glacier. Every evening, all hotel guests are invited to a welcome reception with complimentary appetizers and specialty drinks back in the Moraine Lounge. Since we wanted to get the full experience of the Icefield Parkway, through the hotel, we booked the Columbia Icefield Guided Experience, which includes the two main attractions, the Glacier Skywalk and the Columbia Icefield Adventure, but in a more intimate way. At about 6.30 p.m., our small group headed out to the Glacier Skywalk, the cliff edge walkway with only glass between you and the ground, which is about 300 meters below you. Because we booked this package, our small group got to visit at the end of the day once the public tour is finished. So we only had to share the views with a few other people. After this breathtaking experience, we ate dinner back at the hotel. Because we were adventuring and road tripping all day, we were excited to dress up a little bit and enjoy more of an upscale dining experience. Altitude, the hotel restaurant, serves locally sourced Canadian cuisine and offers creative cocktails, a full bar, and wine menu. We tried the duck, the lamb, and the fish. Everything was cooked to perfection, very flavorful, and the presentation paired with the exclusive view of the glacier was extra special. And I have to give a shout out to the servers. Liam in particular was fantastic and basically treated us like royalty. After dinner, we really noticed how quiet everything was. By 9 p.m., the highway was empty of other tourists and caravanners, so we took the opportunity to soak up the views all to ourselves. And because of the lack of light pollution here, stargazing is especially spectacular. The next morning, we enjoyed complimentary coffee and one last glacier view from this vantage point before heading out on our private guided tour of the Athabasca Glacier. One final perk of this package is that you get to be the first to step on the glacier before anyone else. We boarded what was basically a monster truck that brought us to the glacier. Here you get to walk on it and admire all of its glory. It's crazy to think about the fact that the ice you walk on is 365 meters thick, almost 1200 feet below you. But I think the best part was drinking glacial water, the freshest I've ever tasted. Just a couple things I want to mention. We did pay full price for everything here at the Glacier View Lodge and we weren't compensated or sponsored in any way. And if you aren't planning to stay here or take part in the ice field experiences, which do come at a cost, you can also take the free short 10 minute hike at the toe of the Glacier Trail for a glimpse of these views. After this, it's time to resume our journey along the ice fields parkway north towards Jasper. Only about 15 minutes up the road, stop at Beauty Creek Trail for a hidden gem hike where you'll pass by several waterfalls. The trail starts off on flat gravel, and then as you make your way into the woods, you'll pass by tons of mini waterfalls, eventually finding the bigger Stanley Falls. I was hypnotized watching it crash into the bowl below me. It'll take you about 30 to 40 minutes to get to the top of Stanley Falls, and there are plenty of spots where you can hang out and enjoy the views. Don't be afraid to dip your toes. Leaving Beauty Creek, 20 minutes further, you'll arrive at the double-barreled Sunwapta Falls. This is a really relaxing spot. It's very shaded and only a five minute walk from the parking lot to the bridge viewing platform. If you have time, you could also hike down to the lower falls. Another 20 minutes down the road, you'll hit the impressive Athabasca Falls, a popular spot due to the extremely powerful waters here. So much so that you'll definitely get hit with some misty overspray from the various vantage points but I think this helps you appreciate the immense force and beauty of this natural wonder. One final must visit stop along the ice fields parkway before you get to Jasper is Valley of the Five Lakes. This scenic four kilometer trail takes you through a picturesque landscape of emerald green lakes, dense forests, and striking mountain views. The paths are well marked, and as the name suggests, five glassy emerald lakes sit peacefully as the mountains loom in the distance. Finally, we've made it to Jasper, a charming, quiet, and equally lovely mountain town. If you have a couple days to explore the area, my Jasper travel guide video is just what you need to watch next. <laughs>